Personal Finance PowerPoint Presentation, Mutual Fund Part 1. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Most of this information can be found at Investopedia Mutual Fund, which you can find online. Take a look at the references, resources, continue your research from there. This by Adam Hayes, updated March 7th, 2022. In prior presentations, we've been taking a look at investment goals, investment strategies. We talked about what stocks were, and now we're thinking about the question, what is a mutual fund? A mutual fund is a type of financial vehicle made up of a pool of money collected from many investors to invest in securities like stock, bonds, money market instruments, and other assets. So let's give a quick recap of where we have been. Note that we think about a corporation in general that was a huge invention or innovation where we, from basically a, a natural rights kind of perspective, took human rights, gave it in essence to a corporation, so the corporation can now own property. When the corporation can own property, then of course uh, they want to possibly generate capital within the corporation so the corporation can basically grow for the benefit of the owners of the corporations, which are the stockholders. We then could think about the stockholders or the corporation then trading their stocks on a public exchange, a public exchange having regulatory policies so that the trading of the stock or the corporation is as transparent as possible in terms of rules for reporting their financial statements and so on so that investors have an idea of what they're investing in and all the shares then we have the concept of the shares being the same so the same kind of ownership for common stock ownership in a corporation given every shareholder the same thing for each individual share of common stock which makes it easier for us to value what the common stocks are so that's usually what we think of as purchasing on an exchange when we're purchasing the common stock now the problem with that then was that people that are wealthy could purchase different individual common stocks and have a portfolio however it can be expensive to purchase individual common stocks and therefore the people that didn't ha don't have as much money are not going to have as much access to the market in that way and have much less capacity to have a diversified portfolio so then we have the concept of, well, what if we have multiple people that can pool the money into a fund, a mutual fund, and they could put small amounts of money into the mutual fund, but still be allowed to have diversity because that pooled money can now be invested in different assets, typical assets, often the first people think people think of being the stocks. So now we can say, okay, now I have a diverse, more diverse portfolio, even though I put a fairly low amount of money in, which I could not do if I was to purchase the individual stocks because of the tools of the mutual funds. And then of course we can diversify across the different types of financial instruments in a mutual fund once the funds are pooled together, stocks, bonds, money market instruments, and so on. So when we think about investing typically into a 401k, an IRA, or just us, participating a normal person participating in the stock market we're usually thinking about tools like mutual funds tools which pool together your money and other people's money and then put the investment in place in accordance with whatever rules of the mutual fund have been set up and then your whatever rules have been set up for your benefits will then be uh, in that format so huge tool huge benefit uh, to individual investors as well as of course corporations because the investors now have the capacity to invest and the corporations have the a, a desire to be as transparent as possible to participate in the stock exchange even though they have to go through all these rules to to show their transparency and in, and in, in, in a fair way that would be the idea because they want to generate capital they want people to invest in the corporation so it should be good for everybody involved. So mutual funds are operated by professional money managers who allocate the fund's assets and attempt to produce capital gains or income for the fund's investors. A mutual fund's portfolio is structured and maintained to match the investment objectives stated in its uh, prospectus. Mutual funds give small or individual investors access to professionally managed portfolios of equities, bonds, other securities. Now, when we start thinking about this pool together money, then the question comes up, well, should I have should I have a type of mutual fund that's gonna take a lot of managing cost? Do I wanna be more dependent on the people managing the mutual fund? Or possibly do I wanna try to tie my mutual fund to something like an index where you're basically kind of trying to get an average of the market type of 
type of thing. Obviously, more management that you have in the mutual fund, the more leeway you give to, to, man, to, to the manage of the fund, the more cost you will have because, of course, you'll be paying the fund manager to manage. So there's always the question of, is it worthwhile to pay a fund manager or uh, be, that, or be, that we're hoping can beat the market in essence, or should we just be investing in things that are tied to say index funds or something like that, where we're just betting on in essence, markets or segments of the markets. So each shareholder therefore participates uh, proportionally in the gains or losses of the fund. So mutual funds invest in a vast number of securities and performance is usually tracked as the change in the total market cap of the fund derived by the aggregating performance of the underlying investments. So understanding mutual funds, Mutual funds pool money from the investing public and use that money to buy other securities, usually stocks and bonds. So the value of the mutual fund company depends on the performance of the securities it decides to buy. So when you buy a unit or share of a mutual fund, you are buying the performance of its portfolio or more precisely, a part of the portfolio's value. So obviously, again, you're buying into a portfolio that you couldn't afford to diversify in that way, most likely. And that's what you're, the exposure you're looking to get. So investing in a share of a mutual fund is different from investing in shares of stock. So then the underlying investments of the mutual fund may then be stocks, at least in part, but you're not investing in the stock directly, you're investing in the mutual fund. So unlike stock, mutual funds shares do not give its holders any voting rights. So note, the voting rights and for a lot of people that if you're not involved in the day-to-day -day operations of the companies that might not be a big thing to you because uh, if you own one share of like apple then you're probably not tracking the ins and outs of the board of directors and management of apple as closely as if you had a more significant uh, role, but it could that could be you know a significant component depending on what your objectives are. A share of a mutual fund represents investments in many different stocks or other securities instead of just one holding. That's why the price of a mutual fund share is referred to as the net asset value, the NAV per share, sometimes expressed as NAVPS. Uh, a fund's NAV is derived by dividing the total value of the securities in the portfolio by the total amount of shares outstanding. Outstanding shares are those held by the shareholders, institutional investors and company officers or uh, insiders. Mutual fund shares can typically be purchased or redeemed as needed at the fund's current NAV, which unlike a stock price, doesn't fluctuate during market hours, but it is settled at the end of each trading day. So clearly, you know, if they're based on a portfolio, then the portfolio, they might not be adjusting. They're not going to adjust the portfolio necessarily real time, right? They're going to adjust it on a periodic basis. Ergo, the price of a mutual fund is also updated when the NAVP is settled. The average mutual fund holder holds over 100 different securities, which means mutual fund shareholders gain important diversification at a low price. That's the point for most people. They want to have a diversification exposure to different stocks and so on to get that diversified portfolio, which they couldn't get generally by investing at one stock at a time because it would be more costly to do so and complicated typically. Consider an investor who buys only Google stock before the company has a bad quarter. They stand to lose a great deal of value because all of their dollars are tied in one company. So that would be undiversified, all your money's in one company. On the other hand, a different investor may buy shares of a mutual fund that happens to own some Google stock. When Google has a bad quarter, they lose significantly less because Google is just a small part of the fund's portfolio. Now you might be saying, well, what if Google jumps up in value and now I've diluted my earnings. I could have earned a whole lot more if, if I had all my money in Google. Notice that that's more of a gambling type of thing unless you have, unless you've really looked at it and you've said, I, I, I think that Google is undervalued for this reason and that reason. I'm going to invest in it particularly. But uh, if you're just investing in individual stocks without having some kind of in-depth understanding of them, then that seems to be more kind of like gambling, right? If you're in that area, then you probably want to have a more diversified approach would be your general idea. And if you want to have some money to basically gamble with on the stock market, if you're not, then, then you might want to make sure that you have money that you can stand to lose uh, in, in order to do that, unless you're, again, spending a whole lot of time 
uh, researching the individual stocks and have a, a theory as to why you're going to be weighting individual stocks separately and not having the normal kind of diversification idea that most people would suggest for general investors. So how mutual funds work? A mutual fund is both an investment and actual company. So this dual nature may seem strange, but it is no different from how a share of AAPL is a representation of Apple Incorporated. When an investor buys Apple stock, he is buying partial ownership of the company and its assets. Similarly, a mutual fund investor is buying partial ownership of the mutual fund company and its assets. The difference is that Apple is in the business of making innovative devices and tablets, while a mutual fund company is in the business of making investments. Investors typically earn a return return from a mutual fund in three ways. Number one, income is earned from the dividends on stocks and interest on the bonds held in the fund's portfolio. Just like if you were to invest in stocks, you might get dividends and you might have a gain in the value of the stock. If you're invested in bonds, then you're typically going to be getting interest on the bonds. A fund pays out nearly all the income it receives over the year to fund owners in the form of distribution. Funds often give investors a choice either to receive a check for uh, distributions or to reinvest the earnings and get more shares. Two, if the fund sells securities that have increased in price, the fund has a capital gain. So if the value of the company goes up and you sell it, or the fund does, right, then you're going to get a capital gain. Most funds also pass these gains to investors in distributions. Number three, if funds holdings increase in price but are not sold by the fund man manager, the fund's shares increase in price. So if they don't sell the funds, then they have unrealized capital gains, which often is, you know, that's an increase in value that hasn't been realized. So you can then sell your mutual fund shares for a profit in the market. So you could sell your actual shares in the mutual fund if they have gone up in price in that case. So generally, if you have a mutual fund, you're gonna be getting possibly the, the returns that flow through the mutual fund of the dividends for the investments that are in stocks that pay dividends and interest for the investments that are in bonds that'll flow through to you. If the mutual fund sells the stocks within the mutual fund, then they will incur capital gains if they were a gain on it that might pass through to you. And then if you actually, if you then sell your mutual fund, uh, if it had increased in price, then you would have the capital gain at the sale in a similar way that you would if you owned an individual stock that had increased in price. So if a mutual fund is constructed as a vertical company, its CEO is the fund manager, sometimes called its investment advisor. The fund manager uh, is hired by a board of directors and is legally obligated to work in the best interest of the mutual fund shareholders. So you've got that agency kind of thing going on here. Most fund managers are also owners of the fund. There are very few other employees in a mutual fund company. The investment advisor or fund manager may employ some analysts to help pick investments or perform market research. A fund accountant is kept on staff to calculate the funds in AV, the daily value of the portfolio that determines if share prices go up or down. Mutual funds need to have a compliance officer or two and probably an attorney to keep up with government regulations. Most mutual funds are part of a much larger investment company. The biggest have hundreds of separate mutual funds. Some of these fund companies are, na are names familiar to general public, such as uh, Fidelity Investments, the Vanguard Group, uh, T. Ra Price, and Oppenheimer. Uh, types of mutual funds. Mutual funds are divided into several kinds of categories representing the kinds of securities they have targeted for their port, uh, portfolios and the type of returns they seek. So now that we have the mutual funds, now we've got this grouping and we've got to think, okay, what are my investment goals? What's my investment strategies? What kind of mutual funds can I invest in basically to meet these goals and strategies? And again, there's a whole array of mutual funds we want to be considering how much leeway the the mutual fund managers have on it or do we want to have more less management fund what's going to be the cost of their uh, ex that and then is the and then we want to consider of course like the mix so there is a fund for nearly every type of investor or investment approach so other common types of mutual funds include money market funds sector funds alternative funds smart beta funds 
target uh, target date funds and even funds of funds or mutual funds that buy shares of other mutual funds so equity funds the largest category is that of equity or stock funds this would kind of make sense because this is kind of the original idea you would think that individuals investors wanted exposure to stocks but didn't want to have to buy the individual stocks or it's quite expensive to do so to do diversify so as the name implies the sort of of funds invests principally in stocks within this group of various subcategories some equity funds are named for the size of the companies they invest in so you've got small mid or large so we might try to concentrate on the size of the company obviously the smaller companies are usually more risky because we're hoping they're going to grow more and so uh, the large cap companies are large because they've hit that point where they're basically hopefully stable and just plowing along at that point so others are named by the investment approach aggressive growth income oriented value and others equity funds are also categorized by whether they invest in domestic u.s stocks or foreign equities there are so many different types of equity funds because there are many different types of equities a great way to understand the universe of equity funds is to use a style a box an example of which is below so the idea here is to classify funds based on both the size of the companies invested in their market caps and the growth prospects of the invested stocks the term value fund refers to a style of investing that looks for high uh, quality low growth companies that are out of favor with the market these companies are characterized by low price to earnings pe ratios low price to book pb ratios and high dividend yields conversely spectrums are, are growth funds which look at companies that have had and are expected to have strong growth in earnings sales and cash flows these companies typically have high PE ratios and do not pay dividends. A compromise between strict value and growth investment is a blend, which simply refers to companies that are neither value nor growth stocks and are classified as being somewhere in the middle. So you've got your box here that you could try to categorize in many, like if you look at like the, the, the investment companies online, like a Vanguard or something like that, you'll often see a, a kind of box like this to give you a pictorial way or an overview of the the fun characteristics so so the other dimension of the style box has to do with the size of the company that a mutual fund invests in large cap companies have high market capitalizations with values of 10 billion dollars so market cap is derived by multiplying the share price by the number of shares outstanding large cap stocks are typically blue chip firms that are often recognized by name small cap stocks refer to those stocks with a market cap ranging from 250 million to 2 billion these smaller companies tend to be newer riskier investment mid cap stocks fill in the gap between small and large cap a mutual fund may blend its strategy between investment style and company size for example a large cap value fund would look to to large cap companies that are in strong financial shape but have recently seen their share price fall and would be placed in the upper left quarter of the style box large and value so the opposite of this would be a fund that invests in startup technology companies with excellent growth prospects small cap growth such as mutual fund should reside in the bottom right quadrant small and growth so we might dig into this in a little bit more detail in future presentations the general idea we want to take away from here is that you know the mutual funds can be a great tool for us to to diversify basically being able to invest in the standard kind of things that we would think of when we think of investing oftentimes being the bonds and the stocks but do so in a way that we can pool the resources together and be able to find diversification uh, in that way and then obviously we can dig into the weeds in terms of what are the best diversification uh, ideas for our particular situation which gets back into our investment goals and our investment strategies unique to us